And I have seen one or two things online where we see cars going up in flames. And, and I think there's a, there's a phrase, thermal runaway, that we probably need to talk about. So can you give us an idea of what thermal runaway actually is? Yes, I can. So while it is rare, um, ba- lithium ion battery cells can undergo thermal runaway. And thermal runaway is basically an exothermic reaction that occurs inside the cell where the decomposition of certain materials in the cell uh, results in, in basically a, a, a self-sustaining reaction, at least until the uh, materials are exhausted. And it's breaking down some of the uh, SEI or the solid electrolyte interface layer. It's starting to break down the uh, cathode materials. It starts to break down uh, the carbonate or phosphate that's used in the, in the battery cell. And it'll release some gases. So it'll release carbon dioxide, hydrogen, CO sometimes, um, as well as the electrolyte materials. And because many of these batteries will use uh, hexafluorophosphate type materials in their electrochemistry, um, it can release this HF gas. And all of this is you know, flammable and hazardous. Um, now, um, we have been working on technology and we've actually launched this technology uh, that allows us to detect a single cell venting within a large array. Um, basically, we pick up on this gas trace we can pick up on the CO2 and the hydrogen traces uh, as they evolve, uh, as they're released from a single cell. Um, so some of the newer systems have deployed this type of uh, technique for safety, um, and that allows them to uh, take some much more active countermeasures uh, to prevent that particular uh, cell from contributing to a cascade event. Where that cell has now gone to 600 to 1,000 degrees C. It's starting to melt the materials around it. It may decide to get some of its... Uh, adjacent cells involved in the, uh, uh, the the reaction, so they may fail and cause a cascade failure throughout the pack. Now, generally, what we see is some very good um, uh, passive protection uh, uh, to prevent this from propagating through the pack um, on some of the newest designs. Um, there are many techniques that are being used, reducing the amount of available airspace in the pack through the use of special foams, um, channeling the vent gases so that they don't interact with the bus work uh, because one of the things that does happen is when one of these cells does vent um, it's not only venting these gases at a very high temperature but it's also venting water vapor and particles and some of those particles are carbonaceous soot some of them are metal particles from the uh, aluminum and the copper that's in the cell um, and those are highly conductive so if they engage the high voltage bus bar they can create an arc discharge which can also contribute it to uh, cascading events throughout the pack and making the pack a very unsafe environment. Now, um, what we've done is we basically have designed a gas-based sensor system uh, that can monitor continuously that battery pack. So whether the vehicle's on or off, whether it's charging or driving, uh, we're continuing to monitor uh, the inside of that pack to make sure um, that if you have a cell that is starting to fail and starts to vent, um, we can detect that and that immediately notify the battery management system. The battery management system can notify the driver um, it can start to take some countermeasures to prevent that single cell from going into a failure mode, which could dramatically affect the rest of the pack. And uh, that technology we've had deployed in a couple of applications over the past uh, year and a half, um, and we're scaling that very rapidly for both the mo- mobile and stationary application spaces. And it's also important to, to bear in mind, I, I watched a, a recent panel that you were on with a with a firefighter um, and you talked earlier about the fact that uh, a gasoline powered vehicle, if it goes up in flames, the first responders can be there. They have the technology, they have the expertise and they have the uh, the ability to, to counter that fire very quickly. Um, whereas if we're talking about a true thermal runaway event that, that hasn't had this safety system applied, the firefighter can do little more than kind of just step back and leave it to it. Am, am I right in thinking that? Yes, unfortunately, without appropriate countermeasures and appropriate detection in a timely fashion, so the countermeasures can be taken, um, the uh, uh, event can cascade through the packet. It can engulf the whole vehicle. Um, and generally, some of the issues that come of that, not only now the, the hazardous and flammable gases that are released from a single cell are now multiplied by all the cells in the pack, um, but you have an event that is very difficult for firefighters to access the cells themselves. So it's very difficult for them to fight a fire that they can't get to because these battery packs, they're typically in the floor pan of the vehicle. Um, They're very well sealed. um, So there's not a a good point that they can put direct water on. Um, So there are some challenges there. 
Um, and, uh, and because these exothermic reactions can uh, sustain themselves over a long period of time, um, cooling that pack uh, may involve um, hours of engagement, um, and it may involve thousands of gallons of water. We've had um, some recent experiences with electric vehicles that have been involved in uh, uh, incidents that have required the use of anywhere from eight to 10,000 gallons of water um, to cool that pack from the outside um, because they can't directly access those cells. So there are some, excuse me, there are some challenges here. Um, but with this ability to detect the first cell that is failing as it vents before the fire starts, um, we have given the battery management system and the operator the best opportunity to have a safe outcome because that battery management system knows that it has the capability of doing certain things like aggressively cooling the pack, bringing the vehicle to a safe condition and allowing the occupant to safely egress the vehicle, um, notifying the operator that an incident has happened and they, they really are, the, the vehicle itself is going to take some safety actions to protect the occupants of the vehicle. Um, so all of those things contribute to better outcomes. Now we continue to work um, to improve technology to have better understanding of the cells before they actively vent. Uh, we're working with some of the leading industry researchers on new approaches. Uh, many of those new, new approaches are showing a lot of promise. So we look forward to the future. And uh, while we uh, are in the business of selling sensors, we also want this technology to be very, very safe. And so that has been uh, a primary effort of our, our sensor team is to support electric vehicle and battery safety.